The digital currency Bitcoin is a problem as old as money itself. Theft. Incident, cyber criminals actually stole. $500 million, which is not traceable to any bank. That's right. In the decade or so since Bitcoin was created, Billions of dollars have been stolen, mainly from online exchanges. As another major Bitcoin exchange gets hit with a massive hack. A cryptocurrency exchange in South Korea was hacked. And that's given rise to a new profession, Bitcoin detectives. The promise of Bitcoin is that it would make financial transactions quick and cheap and outside the prying eyes of government and financial institutions. But how private is it really? One of the most commonly um, misused words to describe Bitcoin is anonymous, um, because Bitcoin is not and never has been anonymous. My name is Jason Weinstein, and I'm a former official at the Department of Justice. The people who are drawn to Bitcoin because it's anonymous um, are, are, are in for a rude awakening. One early Bitcoin detective was Kim Nilsson. He's a software engineer who lives in Tokyo and had his Bitcoin stolen. So my name is Kim Nilsson. I've been uh, doing uh, this little in independent investigation of the Mt. Gox incident for the last number of years. The little investigation Kim's talking about became more of an obsession. The currency exchange known as Mt. Gox is prompting many questions about the future of the virtual currency Bitcoin. Nilsson was one of the victims a few years ago of the Mt. Gox collapse. Mt. Gox was the world's biggest Bitcoin exchange, and in the years before its collapse, more than 600,000 Bitcoin went missing. Mt. Gox CEO Mark Karpels issued his mea culpa before news cameras in Tokyo today. There was a weak area in the system, and as a result, we lost bitcoins. Up until then, Mt. Gox had been the place to go if you wanted to exchange traditional currency for bitcoin. It was sort of like as if the, the one major, really dominant bank, for lack, lack of a better word, just exploded. It affected a huge part of the financial ecosystem. Almost everyone who was in bitcoin up until that point would have been a customer of Mt. Gox. Nilsson lost about 12 bitcoins. Today, that could be worth more than $100,000. Nilsson and a couple of other Mt. Gox victims joined forces and created WizSec, a digital security firm to track down their money. So how do they do it? Any bitcoin investigation needs to include an analysis of the currency's shared blockchain, a publicly visible digital ledger of every single bitcoin transaction ever made. And all a Bitcoin address is, a wallet address, is a series of letters and numbers that are associated with an individual. Much like you have a phone number, you have an uh, internet chat address, you have a bank account number. This, for example, represents a Bitcoin wallet address. And so does this. While Bitcoins can be seen moving between wallets, the names of the wallet owners remain anonymous. That's what makes the currency so popular with drug dealers and money launderers. But how anonymous is it? If you could figure out the owner of wallet A, could you see all the transactions that owner had made? That's basically what Nilsson set out to do. And he had reason to believe he could do that. Someone had already leaked internal Mt. Gox documents and posted them online. That's how he knew where on the blockchain to start looking. The leaked data contained, for example, deposits and withdrawal records, including things like the date and the amount. And if you can just go through all of the blockchain transactions, and you can try to match those up and find matching amounts, maybe you can match up all of the data. But there was a problem. There were literally millions of withdrawals and deposits, so this wasn't really doable from a manual perspective. So we had to do it in a sort of automated way. Nilsson wrote a computer program that scraped the entire public blockchain ledger and the leaked Mt. Gox wallet data. He was looking for abnormal transactions that might reveal where the money was going. It took about two years, but Nilsson managed to reconstruct Mt. Gox's wallet and identify another wallet he believed was used to launder stolen money. Now he had an address, but how could he identify its owner? To find out who it actually is, there are a couple of tricks you can do. One common trick that works surprisingly well is search the internet for posts like this. After going through the leaks and other data, Kim connected a suspicious wallet to a person using the moniker WME. Help, I have problems with my deposit. I made this transaction to this exchange and it didn't, didn't get through. And in this post, there was a name, Alexander Vinnick. When I first started seeing Vinnick's name, I initially, it didn't even occur to me that it would be his real name. I assumed it was using an alias. Nilsson shared that information with federal investigators who were looking into Bitcoin crimes, 
And in the summer of 2017, FBI agents accompanied local police who arrested a Russian man named Alexander Vinnick on a beach in Greece. So this guy is Alexander Vinnick, also known as WME. He was the guy we were looking at. Federal prosecutors charged Vinnick with laundering some $400 billion worth of Bitcoin. He's still in Greece, fighting extradition, and claims he did nothing wrong. But what we found that actually led us to this guy, the mistakes he made, is that this was back in 2011, 2012. People weren't terribly advanced at using Bitcoin yet. The guy used his real name online. Maybe don't do that if you're going to steal coins. <laughs> Nelson's company, Wizsec, fell apart before he finished his investigation. But now, a handful of Bitcoin detective firms like Chainalysis and Elliptic are working to trace clues from the blockchain, elsewhere online, and the real world to help solve Bitcoin thefts. Since he started investigating, Nilsson answered one of his big questions, which is whether it's possible to figure out where the Bitcoin went. But he hasn't answered his other one, which is, can he ever get it back? 